This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The principal part of organizational audit and control relates to internal controls. And here you see on the screen the definition of internal control or an internal control system. It's a whole system of controls, financial and otherwise, and it's important to realize uh, that we are not just dealing with financial controls, it's a whole system of controls. So it could relate to uh, how do we ensure that quality is okay, quality control procedures. How do we ensure that recruitment procedures are carried out correctly and fairly and without discrimination and, and so on. So it's a whole system of controls, financial and otherwise, established by management in order to carry out the business of the enterprise in an orderly and efficient manner. So basically, if you didn't have internal controls, it's really saying the, the organization would be chaotic. You couldn't believe figures uh, that you were being presented with. You couldn't uh, have confidence that uh, certain steps were being performed correctly. To ensure adherence to management policies, so if management policy is that nobody should work more than 60 hours per week, then we have to ensure that there's some sort of mechanism or system or control which prevents that happening or if it does happen, uh, which will re relate it to management. To safeguard the assets. Uh, in particular, we have assets like cash, uh, assets like uh, inventory, particularly in uh, businesses where the inventory is small and portable. Uh, but also non-current assets, uh, laptops and the like, small, portable, high-value items have to be safeguarded. To prevent and detect fraud and error. Uh, preventing and detecting fraud and error is not the job of the auditors, it is the job of management. Uh, and again, uh, safeguarding assets, having appropriate systems of authorizations and physical custody of assets, uh, will help to prevent and detect fraud and error. And to secure as far as possible the uh, completeness and accuracy of the records. Whether those records are the ones which are used to produce the financial statements, or whether the records used to produce monthly management accounts, or other sorts of returns like sales, or uh, the fact that maybe inventory needs ordering, uh, we have to try to make sure as far as possible that these are reasonably accurate. There are five uh, components of an internal control system and it's very important that you know these. First of all, uh, there is what's known as a control environment. Uh, this is sometimes uh, called or known as leadership from the top or tone from the top. It's saying that if uh, the managers and the board at the top of the organization have little regard or, or time for internal control systems, then that attitude is going to permeate its way down through the organization and any system of internal control which is uh, set up is going to fall into uh, disuse fairly quickly because management simply doesn't see its worth. If you have, however, very uh, fussy, particular management at the top who want to see uh, every you know, return authorised, every statement uh, going through a form of reconciliation and so on, uh, then this very uh, particular um, uh, attitude from the top again will permeate its way down and everyone will realise that they have to do things properly, they have to comply with the system of internal control, that's what management wants, and if management doesn't get it, management's going to be pretty upset. There is risk assessment. We have to assess where the major risks are. And if I can refer you back to an earlier chapter, risk assessment involves uh, uh, some sort of estimate of the likelihood of an event occurring and then the impact if it does. We don't need a, a system of internal control, uh, which is going to, uh, if you like, give a lot of bother in areas where the risk is very small. What we want to do is to make sure that the risks that are the most important risks are covered and then we can always walk our way down a checklist. 
control uh, procedures or control activities. What are we actually going to be doing to uh, try to impose internal control? And we'll see in uh, a later slide the, the sort of uh, components or procedures which are uh, uh, used typically in internal control systems. Information and communication. For example, if you don't have monthly management accounts, it could be a whole 12 months before you realize that certain expenses are running way ahead of what they should be. And only at the end of 12 months do you discover that something's been going wrong. It's important that we communicate problems, we communicate errors, uh, that we have reconciliations reported, we have got uh, reports of overspends, we have got reports of a a lot of overtime being spent and so on. If we don't have these reports uh, uh, in, and, and conveying information, then internal control is going to be probably too little too late. And finally, there is monitoring. Monitoring means making sure that the internal control system is fit for purpose. For example, if we suddenly uh, started to export abroad, then there's a whole new uh, set of risks which come in, uh, making sure that our foreign currency and so on is properly controlled and that the uh, uh, the goods are properly insured as they, they go abroad and so on. We have to monitor that the internal control system is up to date, but also we have to monitor uh, that it hasn't fallen into disrepair and that people are continuing to do properly what is set out for them in the internal control system. Control procedures typically uh, can, uh, uh, have got the following. First of all, segregation of duties. If you have a system where one person orders goods, receives the goods, checks and approves the invoice, and then pays the invoice, then there is effectively no internal control over purchases at all. It could be that that person is being deliberately fraudulent and is sending goods to friends and relatives. Uh, but it could be that simply if you don't have an independent person checking, uh, then uh, you are really condemned to making the same errors. What you want for segregation of duties is to break up each transaction so that several people are involved. One person to order the goods, uh, one person to receive and count the goods, uh, one person to receive and uh, check the invoice, back the goods received note and the orders, and finally a, a person who is in charge of actually making the payment. That way if there's going to be fraud, four people have to be involved, collusion as it's called, uh, which is high risk, but also because you have one person checking in another and the, and the like, the, the chance of actually spotting an innocent error are much greater. Physical control lock away cash, lock away inventory, uh, uh, lock down the laptops on the desk and so on, uh, put uh, 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 markers on them and so on, so that if they are stolen, then they are recognised as something uh, which has in fact been stolen. Authorisation and approval, uh, authorising orders, authorising overtime, uh, authorising uh, credit limits on new customers, uh, all is very, very important and terribly common in internal control. Management. Uh, management should take an active part and role some in, in, in ensuring that the internal control systems are operating. They shouldn't lock themselves away, really, out of sight. Uh, there is a system known as management by walking about, uh, where just your very presence in the organisation keeps people on their toes. Similarly, supervision. Uh, supervisors and managers are typically the ones who are going to perform the authorization and approvals. And having proper systems of supervision, setting the work, checking the work, signing off the work as having done properly is important. The organization of the system is important. Who do you report to? Who can give you orders? If you don't know who can give you orders if you don't know who is authorized to approve something then how do you know that the right person is, is doing it an organization is pretty simple in, in most cases you have got uh, typically a, 
a purchasing department, maybe a production department, a sales department, an accounting department, an IT department. And it's important that everyone within the organisation knows their role, knows their authority limits, knows what their expertise is, knows where they need to go if they need to question something or to get further authority for it. Arithmetic and accounting, simply adding stuff up, doing reconciliations, uh, cash book to bank to statements, uh, payables, ledger accounts to uh, 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 suppliers' statements and the like. Uh, double checking, perhaps, that invoices have been uh, created correctly by uh, suppliers. And personnel, make sure that you uh, employ people of the right calibre, that you train them properly so that they are fit to carry out their jobs properly, uh, that you tell them where they should go if they have a problem. In other words, really always give them whistleblowing uh, uh, instructions uh, and how they should be uh, pursuing problems that they might have at work. So proper personnel, proper training, proper reporting is very important. In many companies, uh, internal con uh, control is backed up, if you like, by internal audit. In terms of the UK corporate governance uh, uh, code, internal control is absolutely necessary, but internal audit is not mandatory. Uh, internal audit is something which has to be kept under review by companies. So an annual review of some sort for the need for internal audit. Generally speaking, although the internal auditors must have access to senior directors, in practice they will tend to report to and through the audit committee. This, if you remember, uh, was a committee based or made up of non-executive directors. These non-executive directors have seats on the board. Uh, and if internal audit, for example, discover a fraud, they will report it to the audit committee and the Order Committee can bring this up at board meetings. Without an Order Committee, Internal Order would tend to report this to the Finance Director, who may well be embarrassed about this and try to cover it up. Internal Audit will spend a lot of their time reviewing and, and testing the internal control system. Uh, is it properly designed? Is it uh, working properly? Are people doing what they should be doing? They will sometimes be uh, asked to do special investigations. For example, a fraud has been discovered. We need to know who's done it, for how long they've done it, how they've done it, and how much has been embezzled from the company. Value for money audits, usually under the heading of effectiveness, efficiency, and economy. Uh, it could be, should we keep the IT system internal, or should we subcontract it to third parties? Uh, internal audit can have a role in, in, in working out the costs and benefits and so on, uh, or maybe maybe warning people if you subcontract your IT, uh, then you're kind of putting your data outside the company. Are we sufficiently confident that the data is going to be held securely? Identification of risks, though that is also a job of the risk committee, uh, there is no particular reason why internal audit can also have a function in carrying out identification of risks. And then reviewing compliance, not just internal compliance, but also external compliance. Uh, for example, uh, the law might set down minimum wage rates. Uh, and if it does, somebody ought to be ensuring that employees are paid no less than the minimum wage rates uh, set out by law. Uh, and internal order can be given internal uh, can, can be given uh, the role of ensuring external compliance. Type of audits they can get uh, involved with uh, transactions audit, uh, tracing through, for example, a purchase transaction uh, from the placing of the order to receipt of goods to the checking of the goods, the raising the goods received note waiting for the invoice, matching the invoice to the good received note and order, uh, posting the invoice, the payables ledger and eventual uh, paying off that uh, invoice. We need to 
make sure that the transactions are happening properly and logically. Systems audit, uh, that uh, usually refers to the IT system. What are the controls there? Risk-based audits, have we covered all the risks? Are there any risks that maybe have been identified, maybe been noted on the risk register, uh, but still maybe not very much has been done about them or maybe more still needs to be done about them to reduce that risk to something which is acceptable. Accounting systems audit. Uh, uh, are there some holes, if you like, in the internal uh, 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 control system of the accounting system, which might mean, for example, that a purchase invoice might be paid twice or that uh, somebody's overtime could be paid twice. There needs to be mechanisms to prevent uh, double payments of these sorts. Operational audits, kind of looking at the efficiency of the organization. Uh, and although we, we want sort of segregation of duties, uh, we, we're also looking for efficiency. Uh, and sometimes if you have, uh, uh, you know, an order coming in from a customer and the order goes to the credit control department and then goes to the warehouse and then goes to the accounts department, goes to internal control, to the, um, to the uh, uh, credit control department, etc., etc., etc. You've got documents flowing about all over the place, maybe accompanying the goods, and maybe that's not necessary. Every time you move a document or a piece of information, at least two people are involved. Somebody has to transmit that information, somebody has to receive that information, uh, and there's always the chance of, well, there's double work, but there's a chance of errors, there's a chance of delay, there's a chance of the, the information going missing in some way. So we are looking for a, a, a bit of a compromise between reasonable operational efficiency uh, and reasonable internal control. Value for money audit, we mentioned in the last slide, efficiency, uh, effectiveness and economy. Management audit, uh, is the management structure fit for purpose? Are managers carrying out the roles assigned to them? Uh, are uh, managers, do, do managers actually know what the responsibilities are? Uh, are managers trained properly? Are managers uh, reviewed for, for uh, their efficiency and the like? And increasingly, we have got social and environmental audits. Socially, for example, uh, look at the type of people we employ. Uh, is there a bias towards male or female? Is there uh, uh, some sort of unjustifiable balance in the uh, the racial characteristics or the religion of people who are employed? Uh, environmental audits, uh, we increasingly look at the release of uh, carbon or greenhouse gases, our carbon footprint. Increasingly, companies want to publish the amount of recycling they manage and uh, so on. Apart from anything else, the Public Relations Act uh, of doing this can be very worthwhile. But just releasing the information isn't very good. Really needs to be audited so, so that people have got some confidence in it. To rely on internal audit, we should be looking at the following. What is their status? Are they reasonably independent? They are, of course, employed by the company. Uh, the company pays their wages. The company is in some way responsible for their promotion. Uh, but still, we want them to be at, at least themselves confident that they can report problems and errors and frauds and deficiencies in the organization without fear. Are they competent? Do they have enough resources, training? Uh, are they uh, professional? Do they belong to a, maybe a professional body? And finally, uh, are they adopting a systematic approach? Uh, uh, do they go around the company in a systematic way, the different departments in a systematic way? Do they have documentation which sets out the, the, the way the audit is to be carried out? Do they sign off the documentation? Uh, if uh, some deficiency is found in internal control, uh, what is a system for reporting that deficiency further up in the organization? Is it systematic or is it a kind of a more chaotic system, uh, which even if problems were found, we've got no confidence that they're going to be reported or anything is going to be done about them. 
The status of internal and external audits, quite a, a difference uh, here. If we just look at these uh, half dozen or so uh, differences between internal and external audit. Internal audit reports to management, external audit reports to shareholders through the audit report. Internal audit are, report, are appointed by management, external audit are appointed by shareholders. And this automatically gives external audit rather more power to their elbow. Uh, they are reporting to the owners of the company, uh, uh, whereas the internal auditors are reporting to the managers of the company and maybe reporting in many cases to their bosses. Internal audit derive all their power from management. Management will tell them what documents can be looked at. Management could tell them you cannot see the board minutes. But external auditors have the whole power of law behind them. External auditors are allowed to see any document they want in a company they're auditing and allowed to ask for any explanations they require in that audit. Employed, employed by the company, generally in internal audit, uh, uh, whereas external auditors are employed by the external audit company. Coverage, external auditors uh, are really focused uh, on the uh, financial statements. External auditors have potentially got a much wider remit. Uh, any of the, uh, the kind of audits we talked about there, all categories of risk, all categories of system are potentially within the ambit of internal audit. Responsibility for improvement. External auditors, uh, not a prime responsibility, but if the external auditors find some, uh, for example, that a bank reconciliation isn't being done regularly, then they will write a what's called a management letter uh, to the directors of the company saying, you know, this should be done. But it's a kind of uh, maybe subsidiary uh, requirement. Internal auditors, however, Improvement is fundamental to what they're doing. Improvement to the systems, improvements to compliance with the systems and the efficiency and effectiveness of the systems they're auditing. The type of report which internal auditors will provide, uh, it will set out deficiencies in the internal control system. Uh, it will uh, uh, set out incidents of where the internal control system is not being properly complied with and it will report on errors or indeed fraud which have been discovered. Normally the reports uh, can have these three columns here. First of all, here's the nature of the problem. Bank reconciliations are not being done. Second column is really selling this to management, it's saying if bank, bank reconciliations are not being done, uh, then there is a real risk that the bank balance, a cash book, begins to diverge from what the uh, the bank balance actually is and we will have got improper, inaccurate records in cash. And then finally is how do we fix it? Which is usually very easy once you've discovered the first two. How do you fix not doing a bank reconciliation? Well, you simply do one monthly or weekly or whatever the appropriate frequency is going to be.